Blender in general is so hotkey driven. Okay. Right? Okay. And so before 2.8, you'll see this like, uh, they used to have like the selected thing, like their right mouse and all sorts of stuff. So, but Blender is so hotkey driven that changing controls right off the bat to like a Maya or a Mac setup, you may not know what you're missing out on because you don't know what you don't know. So I would just keep it as it is and that's what I'll teach you. Well, this is gonna be interesting because one of Blender's strengths is it's so customizable. Yeah. But, but what's great about Blender too is that you don't have to like download a bunch of extra stuff. It just comes with things that, and you can make it easier on yourself by like enabling some add-ins okay. that, that make it really quick. So, well, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I saw I yeah. saw like a Boolean thing on Twitter today. That looked pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, there's Booleans. There, I mean, there's obviously cycles. There's something called Node Wrangler, which okay. is great for. Um, I mean, it's built in. You just got to turn it on. But that's because like like Max and Maya Blender is also like a node based um, texturing system. But Node Wrangler actually can do some things automatically, knowing what 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 you want to do. So let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so now we've got this stupid cube in the middle of my uh, origin. Okay. Is this so, a camera over here? Yeah, so on the upper right, you'll see like essentially the outliner. Okay, upper right, that's my outliner. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so we got the camera, the cube and the light. And, and so they call, with, with Blender, they have like the scene collection and then you have those group nodes, which are just called collections. And so that's pretty cool. One of the first things I'm going to teach you actually are two shortcuts because you're going to hit them and you're not going to know what happened. Why do you think they don't just call it a group? So hit T and okay. look to your upper left and you'll see that you're, so, that, so that's a tool, right? And so you'll see the, that little bar go left, on the left, go, go, go in and out. Yeah, so if I hit T, it disappears. Hit N and then you'll see something on the uh, right. Okay. So use middle mouse. Okay, so that, orbit. so that rotates me. Yep. And that's called orbit, right? We have to use yep. different terminology. So we're gonna orbit, so so the the cube is essentially a planet and I'm orbiting around it, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, sh shift middle mouse will do your panning. Oh, cool. Okay, so that's like alt, okay. Yep, and then control middle mouse will do your zooming. Oh my goodness. So, okay, such a different, you know, it's funny. So this is how, this is really good for me because I've been using Maya for what, 20 years? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and and this is how my students feel when I try to explain Maya. Okay. One of the first things I think would be good to know is, so like you're moving around, you have what's called the default cube, which everyone makes fun of because it's like the default cube. But currently, if you go to your upper left, you'll see like you're in layout mode. Uh -huh. There's modeling mode, sculpting mode, UV mode. Oh, cool. Um, these are all different layouts to, you know, like optimize what you're doing. We, we, we could go into modeling mode, and I think that, would, that will, will actually be fine because we're gonna do some some modeling while we're in here. So, so, okay. so, so Oh, sweet, I got verts and edges. Sweet, sweet, yeah. sweet, okay. To get in and out of edit mode, you press tab. In and out of edit mode. Oh, yeah. okay, oh, cool, oh, nice. What's next? Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is, is hit tab again because I want, I want to throw you oh, something that's gonna happen a lot on accident with you right now, and I want you to know what's happening. Okay. Go to your orthographic views with the alt and the middle mouse. Yes. So do alt middle mouse. This is what I was trying to figure out, like first of all, okay, alt middle mouse. Okay. Oh, okay, and this snaps. Yep. To the different views. Yeah. And okay, and it's hard to tell what I am, but I guess you have the little indicator up here. So now I'm, yep. I'm on Y, so that's looking, I was looking underneath, okay. Which you can, use by the way too like like if you want to do a quick to z quick oh to nice i can just click those i actually like that yeah. better than why except that it that's not hotkey driven okay that's not it that takes more time okay perfect and then to get out of it just do a middle mouse click and, and then just start you know do the orbit around Ooh, i love it <laughs> so let's go over one of the things that I think is going to drive you nuts at first, um, but but it's going to be really, really cool. So with Blender, uh, G is move, uh -huh. and, and then S is scale, and then R is rotate. Oh my gosh, this is going to kill me, Mike. What I want you to do is hit G, okay. and then what, what, what's, going to, what's going to happen first is that the whole cube is, is just going to move around. So I hit G, and it's not doing anything. 
Oh, well, well so, uh... Do I have to... I don't think your cube is selected. Okay. Now I've got G. And then once you hit G, you're just going to be moving oh, back your cube, right? This is the wishy-washy stuff I was talking about. Okay, well, this is where it gets really cool. So, what I want you to do is I want you to hold down the middle mouse button now. Okay. Oh, and, and it moves... Start snapping oh. to an axis. I, I guess. I kind of like it. I don't know how to feel about it, though. Okay, so I can snap it back to center if I want, kind of. Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah. That, so I don't... I'm not a fan of this whole, like... Do you select a move tool and you're constantly in move? Well, you can let go of the middle mouse once you have, like, an axis that 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 you want to move in no i'm i'm i am let go and it's still why is it still oh, oh well just just uh so so now what we can do is just once you get it to a spot you can just do a left click and and then that's what it, that's where it will be okay all right fair enough okay so i'm gonna grab it again move it move it wait what is going on now it remembers that other position it was in oh, that's interesting so do yeah. So you can, you can do Control Z. Yeah. So once you okay. snap it, okay. So and so, then let go of it. Okay. Yeah. 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 But what's really cool is that let's say you wanted it to be really precise. You could hit G. Okay. Okay. I hit and G. And then hit Y, X, or Z to choose an axis, and then just uh. Yeah, oh. So, so, so hit G Y. <laughs> so this is new, but I get it. I get it. It makes so X or Y. So just just like it sounds okay so that's why yeah. uh, x or z okay yep that is yep. that is kind of cool that's one way of like moving around but there's also tons of snapping options to start modeling you hit tab okay one are vertexes two are edges and three are faces okay one two and three <clears throat> so now go to a face okay so so now do e and you're gonna be extruding all over the place. Ah, okay. Hit E again. So I, was, I just tried to snap because it sounded fun. Yeah, and you and can do it that. does the same thing. Okay, and so I can, but that, it was going up anyway, so that didn't matter. Okay, so yeah. hit E again, boom. Wait, should I hit E again or just right click when I'm done? Oh, when you're done, hit left click and then you can just do the operation again. Okay, uh, so, yeah. So, so, I'm, so, so I'm left clicking and then extruding yes, again. Yes, yes, yes. And then you can hit like I to do like an inset. Oh, I want to try that. Okay, I. Oh, okay, okay. So this is like scaling and extrusion. What you can do is go ahead and I think you can right click and it will. Uh, oh, look at all these. Oh, you know what? Like I get the same thing, but that's just because. Um, yeah. So there's, I mean, there's lots of stuff. There's stuff with normals and there's, there's, there's also like a bunch of pie menus. Hit one to get all your vertexes back. Okay. And then select them all. Do do Shift Z, okay, and that, that will get you into X-ray mode. Oh, cool. To merge. M. Uh, that's. Oh, and then you want by to do distance. By distance, by distance yep. right? Okay. Yep. Now that we've actually done like an operation, I want you to look in the lower left, and you'll see merge by distance. I want you to expand that little carrot. Okay. So now that you can see that there's a the merge by distance, and you can change the distance there. Let's say that you would have had a couple of like extra faces that got merged. But let's do another, um, let's add some edge loops. Let's go back to face mode. Should we stay in x-ray mode? So one, two, and three was the faces, right? Okay, yep. it's okay. So this face mode, oh nice, and it's got selector in the middle, okay. Okay. Shift Z, here we go, okay. Do a ring, or not, or, or to um, do an edge loop, it's, it's control R, and then hover over like an edge, and then you'll see a highlighted edge loop. Oh cool, okay. So one of the things that you can do right here, is nice. you can use your, um, you can use your middle mouse to scroll to, to, to like increase or decrease the, the amount of edges. So um, go ahead and do quite a bit. It's not working. Oh, there we go. Oh, scroll up and down. Okay, that is cool. And then you can left click and then you'll be able to drag left and right. But let's say that you wanted it right in the middle, just right click. And it unifies them. Yep, look in the lower left and you'll see that loop cut and slide. This is everything that you can do. But what one of the really cool things, so you can add more cuts, you can change the factor, which means like left or right. But look at what the fall off is. And then look at the smoothness. Change the fall off curve, but then change the smoothness and you'll see what like how okay. that affects. Okay, the fall off curve. So we're gonna try a uh, sphere, I guess. And then smoothness, we'll adjust that. Oh, that is neat. Oh, that's kind of cool. 
These are the kind of nerd tools we're talking about, Mr. Reese. Okay. Yeah, it's really, really crazy. So that's a really cool way to add, you know, to do some extrusions and then to add some really cool details very, very quickly. And then I can still add the cuts. I can adjust those. That's cool. So now I think one of the, one of the issues that you're going to probably have is I think at this point, I'm going to show you how it is by default. And then I'm going to show you how to make a pie, not, not to make, but to get some pie menus that will feel a lot more comfortable for you because you're used to using pie menus in Maya. Okay. So go ahead and choose one of those front faces. So how then, do you, how do you go back into just object mode if you want to be like Oh tab tab. So tab, okay. So choose one of these faces, okay? And if I hold down shift, can I select multiples? Yes. Okay, so that works the same. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to grab all what's, those faces. What's cool too is that like if you were to uh, hit control so like it, like if you were to do one face on a cylinder but then you want to get a line of faces you can do control click and that will do from one point to the other and it'll go the loops you, you can do um one so just do like an edge and then do alt click or um yeah so you can do control alt and click oh cool oh that's the, nice the loop. nice so we're getting a face, and then what you can do is hit X, and then it's gonna say, do you want to delete? It's gonna have that, that like confirm. Okay, select what I want to delete. Right. Faces, okay. Nice, okay. Okay, that's cool. What I typically do is I actually have a pie menu that is a little bit more intuitive. It's, and they have a whole pie menu system that you can like uh, turn on. So just to show you how to activate it, go to edit and then go to your preferences, then go to your add-on section. Okay, I'm looking for add, okay, add-on. Upper right with the search, just type in pie, P-I-E. Okay, interface 3D view port pie menus. So activate that and then you can um, actually open it up and you'll see all the different pie types that are available just to open up the carrot. Oh, the carrot, there we go. A few here that I have activated, but I think the one that will help you out is just the edit delete pie hockey X. Just be turning them on one by one once you actually understand what they do. So turn these guys off? All off besides just, just the one that we're trying to work with. Okay. Yeah. Now you can just close that. Okay. And then now do the same thing where you want to go to delete a face. So I'll hit X. Oh, nice. Ah, the pie is making sense now. So this is very Maya-esque. Mm -hmm. Okay, so delete vertices, delete edges, delete faces. Oh, cool. That's yeah. nice. So you'll also see something called called dissolve. Yeah. I'm don't, don't do that for a face, but it's going to make sense for edges. So dissolve means delete edge and vertice at the same time kind of thing. So this will turn these into triangles. Okay, so let's try that. Oops. So you got to hit X. I'm trying to right click again. Okay, so X, dissolve uh, edges, right? Oh, okay. Kept all the face and just got rid of all. Okay, cool. Yeah, so they call that dissolve. I mean, if you dissolve vertices or edges on that, it's going to do the exact same thing, but cool. Oh, interesting. So this left floating edges, which is not pretty. Delete the edges, then it's a big ugly mess. Can you go back to your to your preferences? I'm going to just change one key mapping that, that will make this nice. Yeah. I think you'll like this a little. Preferences. So, 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 yep. So go to preferences, key map, and then within the search bar, go to search type in search. You can change the F3 to spacebar. You can just click on what, what the F3 okay. shows now and then just hit spacebar. Okay. Okay, I want to hit two. Hit two, okay. Do the top edge and then you can just hit, uh, you can hold alt and just do the, do the other edge that's next to it and then that will get the entire. Got it. So now I want you to hit spacebar to type in fill. Oh, I just hit F and it just filled it. In any case, <laughs> I wonder, um, you can hit F3. Okay. I think I've to get your search. It's not working. I think we broke it. So what's really cool, especially with like circular holes, I think this will be really cool is if you did grid fill. So I'm gonna hit F3 and then if we type in F, does it show like the different type of, okay, and grid fill. So control, control F is grid fill. And, no, it's not anything. You just actually have to select that. So alt F is fill. So grid fill, so we'll click that. Oh, that's cool. So it just automatically knows where, to, it automatically connects all your loops. Yeah, and so if you look on the lower left, you'll see like a span and you'll see offset. What's really cool is that- like, Oh, that's like cool. You oh, you can rotate it. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so like if you had a cylinder, this would make filling in stuff super fast as well as things to um, just to connect 
let's actually let's now get in a uh, cylinder. Go ahead and hit tab. So, so if I just, so if I hit X, will it delete this cube? I mean, it's not a cube anymore. Okay, delete. Okay. So um, shift A will bring up your creation menu. Okay. And then, then you, you can go to mesh, and then you can go to cylinder. But it's going to create it where your, where your three D cursor is. Right. Okay, buddy. So it created it where that thing was, and and to be honest, I don't. Re <laughs> I don't remember how to move it. Oh, well, to move, oh, you mean to move the cylinder? Yeah, no, to move the, that point. That's shift and right clicking around. Yeah, so, so, so let's say that you wanted to snap your cylinder to your 3D cursor. Okay. Um, go ahead and hit, hit shift S and I'm, I'm hoping that brings up a pie menu. Whoa, or okay, that scale. Okay, shift S. Okay, there's a pie menu. Cursor to world origin will bring your 3D cursor to the world origin, which is what you want. Oh, That's cool. what you've been trying to do. So um, I'm sure you're asking yourself, where? how do you show wireframes? How do you show all that great? Oh, I'm asking myself a million questions. In the upper right, you have a bunch of those uh, up here. things. So, yep. this, so this is my x-ray right there. To the left of that is a carrot. Yep, that one right there is called the overlays. So there's my wireframe. Yep, and then just go ahead and get that going just so we can kind of see what we're doing. Okay, and I'm gonna click off. Okay, interesting. So I clicked off the x-ray just so we could just see the wireframes on the object. And it's weird, my I'm, I'm no longer rendering the object. It's just kind of... Oh, well, that's because you're still on wireframe. So like in the upper right, choose um, viewport shading and it, there's the, the one next to the wireframe is a solid one. Oh, got it. Okay. Uh, there we go. So what? I can't be in viewport shading and wireframe. All right, whatever. What if? Okay. Oh. Okay. So so now. Oh no, you're you're still on your wireframe. It should be the one that's right next to. Right, that one. Okay. So so there's not that and wireframe. Well, now go to your overlays, your viewport, your viewport overlays thing that I showed you before, and make sure that your wireframe is actually on. Viewport shading method to display shading objects in 3D. So to the left of the double box is a carrot, and it looks like it has like like the Boolean symbol. Uh, okay. Viewport overlays, okay. And then on the bottom there is a wireframe. You should be able just to select it. Okay. And then click on wireframe. Oh, okay, got it. Okay, um, so if I wanted yeah. to, so so let's do something simple with this. Okay. Sure. So I just want to insert an edge loop, maybe right here near the top, and then I want to grab that top face and scale it down to create okay. kind of a dome shape. So let's just let's just do some simple procedures here. Uh, I'm gonna hit tab. Yep. And then I am just gonna go. I'm just gonna make my life easy here. I'm just gonna select not extrude. I'm gonna select loop cut you can do that or do control r okay so i'm just hit control r okay so i want it and do i middle mouse drag i can't remember do control r and then you you hit left select to say yes i want an edge loop there okay and then i and move then it up you'll get the up and down yep okay so i move it here's where i want it boom yep and, and, left, and normally left. in my i would just hold down shift and kind of snap it to grid or whatever but that's fine Okay, so now I've got it pretty much where I want it now, right? Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate up. I'm gonna go uh, with one, three. two, with three. I can go into face mode. Yep. And, and now I want S to scale. just S for scale. Okay. Yep. Oh, super easy. And now if I want to move that face up, I would hit G, and it would do that, and I hate it. So I'm gonna leave it here now. I'm gonna deselect it. And now, what if I just want to move that up on on Y? Well, then just do G Y. Or, or okay. you can go to your left and do the move, and you'll be very happy with that. Yep. That's oh that. yes, this is this is this makes sense. <laughs> okay, so then I can just move it where I want. If I wanted to move it on one of those other ones, I could do it. So this is what I'm talking about, wishy washiness, right? Because in Maya, and I hate I hate to keep saying Maya, but in Maya, if you wanted to do what it originally did, you just grab that middle circle. So this is essentially a Maya control here. Right. But I see and what you're saying about the X, uh, the S Y thing or G Y. So, so with what you're doing right now, what how how I would have quickly moved it just straight up is I would have hit G and then middle mouse uh, clicked and then that will snap to your to your Z axis and then you can do all the stuff that you want to do very very easily so now just for fun i want to add another control r does the 
Okay, yep. control R. I just wanted to add another one and just expand it on my own. So if I right click on that. Just right click. Right click, snaps to the center, perfect. And then uh, S will scale that out so I can kind of round that out if I want to. And now if I wanted to move that edge up, I'm gonna hit, uh, I'm gonna right click and then because I don't remember how to do what you told me to, it's already on the move tool, which is nice instead of the marquee, I can move that up and down, okay. So this is starting really cool. This is starting to make sense to me. Okay, yeah, show me something really cool. Okay, so now let's say that you wanted to add an edge loop and slide it along the edge. Do Control R and get it right in the middle. So now instead of hitting G, you're 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 you're, you're going to love this, dude. G G G G G G. Good game. Okay, G G. I did G G. Oh well, okay. yeah. So so so. Do your selection, get it in the middle. Okay. So, so you know, like you would have nor done normally, get the edge loop okay. like within the model. And then when you want to move it, hit GG. It's just, it's just tweaking it. Should I place it first? Oh, that's cool. Okay, and then I can move it after the fact. With whatever you're doing, like let's say that you wanted to move something on the X or Y or the Z axis, you can hit that axis twice and it will move it locally. I click that. So, so now, Gabe, let's say that you wanted to, um, well, so one quick thing is that if you hold shift while you're doing anything, it will, it will be like a precision placement. Oh, that's nice. Okay. I like that. Okay. So I feel like the one thing I've learned how to do this section is add edge loops. Let's add one edge loop in the middle, perfectly right in the middle. And then this will lead into our next, um, tool, which is bevel. Okay. So I'm going to add this one to the middle and, and I can't right click. I'm gonna right click this, no. Oh, so, so yes, left, left click. click to accept it and then right click to center it perfectly in the middle. Perfect, okay, so that's that's where I, okay, I get it. So bevel is the next tool, kind of like control R is like the edge loop. Okay. Control B is your bevel. So do it, okay, so, control yeah. B makes sense, uh, control R does not. Control B for bevel and, yep. it, and it does this big crosshair. Yep, now start going up and down. I, I am, it's doing nothing. Oh. Oh, oh. wait, what happened? So that yeah. was my edge loop. Bevel, Control B, Control yep. B, right? Yes, Control B. Okay, now it's, oh, there we go. Oh, that's cool, I like that. I like that, it's kind of like, yeah, it's creating an offset edge loops uh, on that edge loop, so it's splitting that edge loop in two, yep. right? So I want, so this is on a planar surface, so I actually don't want to do it on this one, I want to do it on that center one I just created. And cool. that's and that's going to do exactly what I would expect. It's just going to bevel that edge, um, but th that's the one I want. Do the Alt within the direction, then, like, if Boom. you want to okay, ring, got it. yep, I got the ring. Ring is Control R. The ring is Control Alt. Oh, but I just did it. The loop is Alt clicking. Okay. Oh, the ring. Oh, yeah. makes sense. Okay. Oh, Fahrenheit three fifty is telling me how to do this. Okay, so we're gonna do the bevel again. Control B, and I think I did it in the wrong spot again, or something. Something happened. Something. Some sort of unhappiness ensued. No, okay. no, that was right. Uh, um, Alt. once you get that little cross, oh, that, yeah. that, that, that thing, you want to go up and down with it. <laughs> so, so we just beveled this. What's cool too, is that at this point you can mouse scroll to get more edges. Oh, oh, that's awesome. Oh, that is actually really cool. I like that. That's a, that's a lot of bevel control you've uh, introduced me to. Look how uniform that is too. Yeah, plus it keeps your volume. It's a thing of beauty. So if I'm modeling a fat round character, all right, Mike, this is starting to look like a this is starting to look like a uh, like a, a glue bottle or something. I kind of like it. I like the way it's yeah. going. So what if I want to grab like uh, okay now I want to grab this uh, edge loop of faces and just move it up. Yeah. So hit three. And if I hold down Alt right, will that grab the loop? Yes, it did, and it worked. Okay, this I'm starting to get. I think I'm getting the hang of it, and I'm gonna scale this thing in just for Fonzies. And then I want to grab this loop. So if I just hold down E, now I can bring that straight up. Hit S and it blows up. Okay, didn't want it. Oh, that's, okay, so this did what we were trying to do earlier. That's exactly, yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay, so I'm gonna hit E again, extrude this up, S and scale it down to taper it. So it's like a mustard bottle. Now let's say that you want to smooth your normal because we all want to do that. Oh, smooth my normals, yeah, let's do it. So two, two things, first let's hit tab and then right click and then go to shade smooth. Right click and then shade smooth, okay. Which will make it all smooth. Okay, but we're in wireframe. So I'm gonna turn off wireframe, right? Okay. Oh wait, so I need to do it in the Boolean thingy because I turned it on in there. Okay, so we're gonna turn off wireframe. So it's not smooth though. Do I need to select the object? Yes. 
Okay, so select the object, right click. Where was it? Oh, shade smooth. Okay, oh, look how smooth it is. So that's completely smooth, right? Yep. But but we know that- We wanna we got... harden some of these edges. Right, so the easiest way to do that for now is go to the right menu and you'll see a third from the bottom, a triangle with three verts on it. Okay, on this one. So click that. And then go to auto smooth and then and then choose your uh, degree. So, oh, so go under normals. So no, you're good. UV maps, vertex colors, face map, and then normals. Okay. Oh, and this is it, nice. Yeah. This is really nice. So anything below 30 degrees will yep. will harden. What's really cool is that that does that that will do it automatically while you're modeling. Oh, that is great. That is uh, super handy. Okay, so one thing that I know you're going to have an issue with when you start modeling is when you start scaling, it's the transforms, right? You're you're you're, you're going to want to reset transforms at some point. Right. The easiest way to do that is to do a control A. Well, first so get your object and then do control a and then you just need to do either rotation scale or you can do um do apply all all transforms all transforms okay and that will reset your transformations oh okay cool because if you start to do like modifiers you know like if you were to do a bevel modifier which i can show you maybe in like the next um section the next time we do this um when you when you apply something to an object that has weird scaling, you're going to get a weird result. Do you need to know anything else besides what we've gone over to do that successfully? Do you want to learn how to copy something, how to like duplicate something? Uh, so I learned that once before. Let's do it though. Let's do that though. Yeah. Uh, Shift D. That's right. Shift D, and then I can just move my little ketchup bottle over. Now I have lots of ketchup bottles. Yep, that's cool. No, I think, so I think what I want to do uh, is struggle a little bit and try and figure out some of the stuff I would do in Maya on that hydrant. I forget what it's called, but it essentially has the object data like displayed so that you can move it X, Y, or Z just by dragging like the object data. That's what your N is. So if you hit N. Without selecting anything or? Yeah, just, yeah, without, without selecting anything. Okay, okay. So that's my, now, local. oh, so these are my local attributes so I can move things. Yes. Yeah. precisely within there okay that's great and the same with scale <laughs> yep. and and i'm assuming i can uh hold down shift and select no you can't do all of them uh the lock button maybe oh you can lock certain ones oh that's cool so now this is turns into more of a ketchup bottle okay how do i how do i scale these uniformly though oh there we go no i didn't do it either like if I wanted to select oh. X, Y, and Z and, and okay. scale those so, back and forth. So, so so just drag select like all three and then hit three or, or, or something. Oh, but you have to type it in. I can't, I can no longer yeah. rotate. Okay, that's a bummer. But yeah, I like knowing like the move tool is very helpful. Okay. No, that's cool, Mike. This has been illuminating. This has been great. Well, I'm glad that you liked it. And I, I feel like we're at a point where you'll be able to at least move around, understand most things that you can accomplish a model and then struggle to the point where you may have to look some stuff up, but you'll, uh, I think it'll be a good learning experience. Oh, that's great. Mike, that's huge. So let's plan on next Saturday. Perfect. And I'm going to at least get to work for a couple hours this week doing the hydrant. Okay. And I can show you what I did and then we can jump on to something else. Sounds good. Sounds really good.